Here's your wrestling news for October 28th, 2022. And we're kicking off with AEW. And after the backstage fight it all out, Tony Khan suspended CM Punk, Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, and others, and arranged a third-party investigation into the matter. This investigation has sought to find out who really is to blame for what took place on the evening of September 3rd, and we may now finally have some definitive answers. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer reported that the investigation into the fight is now over, and you can tell by last night's Dynamite who's being punished. On Dynamite, there was no mention of CM Punk, while Omega and the Bucks were featured in a video promo hyping up their return. Meltzer said that while the investigation is over, that all four main suspects are banned from speaking publicly about it, as are the rest of the roster. With reports that AEW are seeking to buy out Punk's contract, it appears his time with the company is about to end, and we should hopefully have a definitive answer soon, now the investigation is complete. While the Elite and Punk have kept silent on the matter since September, the same can't be said about those close to Punk who have had plenty to say on the matter. This week, Punk's camp claimed that the former world champion's dog, Larry, was injured when the elite, quote-unquote, kicked the door in, resulting in the dog having two teeth removed. This has certainly made Punk seem more sympathetic, but as Meltzer explained on his show, that may not necessarily be true. What was said is basically, it's an outright lie. I did have that told to me. Never in seven weeks have I heard anything mention anything about the door opening and hitting the dog. I just find that so weird. The side that was trying to defend him all along never brought that up once, and now all of a sudden, that's the story. If Punk's side indeed have fabricated the story of Larry being hurt, then this will only make people even less sympathetic to his side, which is the last thing the problematic wrestler needs right now. While Punk's time in AEW is seemingly up, Kenny Omega and the Bucks are expected back soon, and were even backstage during this week's Dynamite. AEW hasn't confirmed what the Bucks and Omega will be doing once they're back, but we may now have an idea. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained how the plan is for the Elite to go after the AEW Trios titles once they're back, the very same titles they'd want it all out. Winning the trio's titles had been a long time coming for the Elite, who had been teasing the gold since AEW's early days, but their reign was ended after mere hours due to what happened at All Out. There has been speculation among the fans that the Elite will be turning heel when they return, as in the video this week, the Bucks and Omega were removed from classic AEW moments, which could be how the suspended group feel they've been treated. Whether they turn heel or not, the Elite are on their way back to AEW and expect a feud with current trios champions Death Triangle once they're fully back on our screens. More from Punk now as it's been said that the roster in AEW is vehemently against the former world champion, with many saying he is too toxic to be brought back. Chris Jericho has been with AEW since the start and had worked with Punk back when both were in WWE and has made his views on the Chicago wrestler very clear. Fightful Select reports that after the backstage fight it all out, Jericho walked out to Punk and told him that he is a cancer to AEW and a detriment to the locker room. Punk's response wasn't captured verbatim, but sources at AEW told Fightful that when confronted, he told Jericho that this wasn't his business and that he should just leave him alone. Jericho has been lauded as a locker room leader without Punk and the Elite around, and alongside Brian Danielson and John Moxley, has held talent-wide meetings to make sure things run smoothly. During his all-out post-show comments, Punk said that wrestlers who have a problem with him should say it to his face, but the problematic former champion didn't appreciate when Chris Jericho did just that. In July, Austin Theory won the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, and the cocky superstar has been thinking outside the box for when he'll cash in. Theory has said that he's open to cashing in at an untelevised event, and has even teased challenging for the NXT Championship, but now a new, never-before-seen idea has come out. WrestleVotes reports that one idea being floated around is for Theory to be the first superstar to wait a year, meaning he'll be waiting until Money in the Bank 2023. The report adds WWE would play on the idea that Theory is running out of time and could have to cash in within minutes of his contracted world title match expiring. 
Theory had been one of Vince McMahon's personal favorites, but ever since the former chairman retired, his booking has seen a serious downturn. This week's Raw marked Theory's first victory in over two months, but if WWE does plan on making Mr. Money in the Bank a world champion, then they're going to make him wait for it. If Theory wants to cash in now, he'll have to go through Roman Reigns and the Bloodline, including the group's honorary oos, Sami Zayn. Zayn has become a highlight of WWE TV thanks to his work with the Bloodline, even being called the top performer in wrestling today by Hurricane Helms, but his run with the group wasn't planned this way. Speaking with the Mirror Sport, Zayn addressed his time with the group and said this originally was supposed to be a short-term thing. He added, This is one of the more filled-out long-term stories I've ever been a part of, and it's long even by WWE standards. Usually we might do two or three month stories, but I've been aligned with the bloodline in some respects since April, and we're still only kind of scratching the surface as to where this is going to go. While we're sure that Jay Uso wishes Zayn's time with the bloodline had already ended, the Canadian has been massively entertaining as part of the group, despite what WWE had planned at first. Since July, WWE has been bringing back superstars released under the previous regime, with Bray Wyatt, Karrion Cross, and the majority of Hit Row making returns. Earlier this month, it was reported that WWE has significant interest in re-signing Chelsea Green, and now there's been a major update regarding the Canadian wrestler. PW Insider reports that during the latest Impact Wrestling tapings, Green filmed a vignette ending her vexed tag team with Deanna Perrazzo and seemingly her exit from the company altogether. The report adds that Green would not give up being a regular feature on Impact, where she previously worked as Laurel Van Ness, if she did not have a much better offer from WWE. Green signed with WWE back in 2018 and had her main roster call-up in 2020, but suffered a serious injury that forced her debut match to be changed, and she was released before ever returning. Now Chelsea Green has another chance to be a success on WWE's main roster, and we'll have to see how she fares under Triple H should she re-sign. Green may soon be approaching a return to WWE, but one former superstar the company won't get is Josh Woods. Woods worked with WWE as part of NXT from 2014 to 2016, but did not have much success, and last December made his debut for AEW, where he was defeated by Sean Spears on an episode of Dark. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select reports that Woods has now signed a contract with AEW, which is said to be both a multi-year deal and a full-time contract. In addition to NXT, Woods has also worked in Ring of Honor and is a former ROH Pure Champion. Fans have already seen Woods compete for the AEW World Tag Team titles on last week's Rampage and recently challenged for the ROH Pure title, but expect to see much more of the former NXT superstar now that he's under a full-time deal. Each year, Pro Wrestling Illustrated releases its list of the top 500 male wrestlers, which this year saw Roman Reigns take the number one spot, but that's not the only list they put out. In recent years, PWI has been sharing their annual list of the top 150 female wrestlers, and this year's listing was made public this week. It is Stardom Siuri who has taken the top spot, and in the report, PWI called the reigning World of Stardom champion as someone who is regarded by many as the best wrestler of any gender in the world. Raw's women's champion Bianca Belair had to take second place, and while the injured AEW Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa has had to settle for the bronze. Becky Lynch's lengthy reign as Raw Women's Champion earned the man fourth place, while AEW TBS Champion Jade Cargill may be undefeated, but that could only earn her the number five spot. Of course, both these lists are entirely subjective, and your view may differ, but who do you think is the best women's wrestler of the past 12 months? Let us know in the comments below. And we're ending today with Sheamus, who was brutalized by the Bloodline during a recent episode of SmackDown and hasn't been seen on TV since. WWE later announced that Sheamus suffered a non-displaced fracture near his elbow in the attack, but like many injury announcements, this wasn't entirely true. Instead, PW Insider reports that Sheamus was written off of TV because he's getting married this weekend, so don't expect him on tonight's episode of SmackDown. Sheamus and Isabella Revilla announced their engagement back in July 2021 when the former WWE World Champion popped the question in his native Ireland. 
Drew McIntyre has said that he's serving as Sheamus' best man, meaning it's likely he won't be on the show tonight either, and we're wishing Sheamus and his bride the best of luck with their future together. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.